These are the best buttermilk biscuits you will ever make. First, throw your butter in the freezer for at least 30 minutes, then measure two and a half cups self-rising flour like this, spooned and leveled. Grate half cup frozen butter on the large holes of a box grater, then add to flour. Mix and then freeze for 10 minutes. Make a well in the center of the flour, then add a cup of buttermilk. Gently stir 15 times. Count them. Turn dough onto a lightly floured surface and pat into a nine by five rectangle, then fold in half. Repeat three more times, then pat to one inch thick and cut with a two and a half inch round cutter. Bake at 475 for 15 minutes, then brush with melted butter. Look at those layers. This is how you really make classic Southern sweet tea. Boil four cups of water, then pour it into a heat proof pitcher. Steep four family size or 12 regular size tea bags for seven minutes. If you want crystal clear tea, hear me out on this one. An eighth of a teaspoon of baking soda. I know it's weird, but I promise it works. Then stir in a cup of sugar. Stir it all up with four cups of ice and that's the tea. Cheers y'all. In the South, a tomato sandwich is always in season. To make a tomato sandwich, don't even think about using anything other than old fashioned white bread that sort of sticks to the roof of your mouth when you bite into it. And don't you dare toast it. The condiments, just a ton of mayo. Like both sides of the bread, just when you think you have enough, add some more. And salt and pepper, that's it. If you wanna be fancy and add lettuce and bacon, then honey, you've got a good BLT, but that's not a tomato sandwich. And at the end, if your hands don't look like this and your bread is not this soggy, you did it all wrong. Let's make some real cream corn. Now this is the real way to do it. Get out a corn creamer, a tool made specifically for creamed corn. It cuts the kernels off and then milks the cob so all of the creaminess comes from the corn itself and not some added stuff. Run the cobs along the corn creamer to release the milk and cut off the kernels, then transfer it to a pot and cook over medium heat until thick. Season with salt, then add a splash of cream and a good hunk of butter. Not too much cream though. Serve top with chives. Oh, and it's also a great dipper for fried okra. Trust me. You should never wash your cast iron skillet, even if it's this dirty. Run hot water in the skillet, then scrub with a metal mesh scrubber or kosher salt. Whatever you do, don't use soap and don't put it in the dishwasher. Dry and rub down every part of the skillet with vegetable shortening or oil, then bake upside down for an hour at 350 degrees. Use foil to prevent an oven mess. After time, your skillet will be worn in, shiny, and completely nonstick. Most holiday recipes serve a lot of people, but here's a recipe that's perfect for just one. If y'all learn any recipe from this account, I promise this is the one you're gonna wanna remember. Sometimes I sit on my couch watching Netflix and crave just one really good cookie. All you do is soften a tablespoon of butter in the microwave for 10 seconds. Mix it with a tablespoon of brown sugar, a teaspoon of regular sugar, two tablespoons of flour, a drop of vanilla, and some chocolate chips. It doesn't have raw egg in it, so you can eat the dough straight or bake it at 350 for 15 minutes, then sprinkle with salt. You're welcome. I just made peach ice cream in a jar. Pour one cup of cream, two tablespoons of sugar, a half teaspoon of vanilla, and a pinch of salt in a quart-sized mason jar and shake away. Now would be a really good time to learn a new TikTok dance. When it's as thick as loose whipped cream, add your peaches and freeze for three hours or overnight. Um, yum! You only need five ingredients to make these delicious buttermilk peach popsicles. For a truly refreshing treat this summer, keep these sweet popsicles on hand. Making this recipe is a delicious way to use up any overripe or less than perfect peaches. It's a fun and easy activity to do with the whole family. Simply combine the five easy to find ingredients in a food processor. Then stir in one cup of finely chopped peaches into the buttermilk mixture to create a peachy taste with every bite. Next, divide the mixture among plastic frozen pop molds, leaving room at the top to allow for expansion. Freeze the pops six to eight hours and then enjoy the sweet taste of summer. Today we're making strawberry ice cream in a bag. First step, chop your strawberries. Next step, put all of your ingredients in a bag. Two tablespoons of granulated sugar, a cup of half and half, a teaspoon of vanilla, and all of your chopped strawberries. This is like half a cup-ish. Seal your bag, make sure this thing is super, super duper sealed. Next thing you need is a gallon sized bag and some rock salt or ice cream salt and four cups of ice. Dump your four cups of ice in your gallon bag and get a quarter cup of your salt of choice. Put your strawberry ice cream inside this bag. 
take your bag, get a kitchen towel. Now I can't wait to get a bowl, so I'm just eating it straight out of the bag. Look at this. This is about to be your new favorite summer cocktail, and you can thank the state of Texas. Let's talk about ranch water. It's a wildly simple three ingredient cocktail made popular by cattle ranchers in West Texas. Think of it like a dressed down margarita that's impossible to mess up. Just grab your favorite tequila, lots of fresh lime juice and Topo Chico. And yes, it has to be Topo Chico. It is the most bubbly and refreshing summer porch cocktail ever. 